Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Carlisle, I would like to go back to uh, one of your comments. You talked about the filters uh, stopping leaking, as you described it. Does that have, uh, is that 100 percent with the filters, there, there's not going to be a problem? Yeah, that was, yes, sir. That was uh, confirmed in both the industry test and the government testing. Both confirmed that our filters are doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. They actually filter our signal down to a level that's a thousand times stricter than what the FCC requires for us. Uh, and that was a level, by the way, that the GPS industry picked in 2002 and asked us to agree to. So that's what we agreed to. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, I come from rural Colorado and obviously support a lot of broadband uh, being moved out into rural America, but uh, we have a lot of problems right now, particularly for our small businesses uh, that are struggling in terms of a lot of the costs, uh, none more so probably than a lot of our farmers uh, and other G GPS users who are already struggling right now in our economy. Uh, the U.S. Census Bureau estimates that about 50 uh, million people live in these rural areas. How many of these 50 million citizens that, that are in rural America right now would receive new broadband service? And additionally, can you tell us uh, how many would be covered by light squared uh, if you move forward with your operations? Well, in terms of wireless service, they will get it the day we turn on uh, and uh, get uh, our new next generation units out there. Remember, we have got a satellite that covers 100 percent of the United States and out to 200 nautical miles offshore. Uh, so, and it reaches these devices. That is why we spent a billion dollars on it. We, we spent $250 million of that billion inventing technology that had never been built before. Um, so when the day we are out there. Is that, is that satellite, uh, is that just a receiver that then transmits as the technology on the ground? Yeah, it is it's a, it's a pipe. So you can put okay. basically mm -hmm. any kind of uh, signal you, you, you need over it. So, uh, and that will operate at speeds that are approximate to what you get on 3G today. So you can do phone calls, emails, uh, texts on it today. Now when we roll out, now the, the rollout of our 4G network, that is going to depend on the business deals we do and the opportunity out there. But I will say this, we have had a significant amount of interest from rural wireless companies who do not see an alternative to being able to build out. Uh, you know, on this issue, you know, there was a 700 megahertz for rural uh, development uh, that, was, uh, that was put out there. And unfortunately, uh, those carriers can't get enough of a volume to be able to attract uh, the chip companies and the handset manufacturers to put those frequencies on their devices. Uh, so it's been very difficult for them to actually have an independent way of, uh, of moving forward. And that's why entities like the Rural Cellular Association support Light Squared. Right. Uh, and, and I think that is an important point because it does get down to some economics. Um, in your statement, you uh, claim that the revised implementation plan will solve interference for 99.5 percent of GPS receivers. And making the assumption, this is obviously a big assumption, that your figures are completely accurate, I understand that 0.5 percent of the receivers you admit are affected by high precision re receivers used in agriculture, construction, and surveying. Uh, you stated in your testimony uh, that this 0.5 percent figure is actually 750,000 to, I believe, a million units. Uh, that is a lot of Americans that are going to potentially be negatively impacted by this implementation. How are we going to deal with that? Mm -hmm. um, to be uh, clear about the number, I think 99.5 percent is probably uh, a liberal estimate of it. Actually, if you take the, the worst case scenario of only 400 million devices in the universe, which seems to be the minimum we have ever seen as an estimate, and 1 million precision devices uh, being out there, which is the largest number we have ever seen estimated, it is 0.25 of a percent. So really the number should be 99.75 percent. Um, but in terms of, uh, of how we fix that, um, there are three factors which indicate that the full universe is not going to need to be replaced. First, a significant number of de precision devices use different types of technology. Some use satellite technology to, to achieve high, high levels of precision. Some, like RTK, use terrestrial uh, uh, technology. So when you test these out, you see different results. And about and 10 out of 38 were fine. Now, the majority won't be. And, and by the way, fine, I mean, they didn't suffer harmful interference under the strictest definition of harmful interference used by the GPS manufacturers. 
So not all of them are going to be affected. Not all of them are going to be used in close proximity to where we will be operating. Even in rural communities where we are deploying, we may only have the ground network in the denser areas rather than in the far fields out, out uh, far away. And then third, um, we're going to be, it's not a flash cut. We will be deploying over five years, and we'll be, we will have an unprecedented level of transparency as to where we are going to be and when we are going to be there, so people will know well in advance. Uh, and a certain number of these devices are going to change out in the ordinary course of business anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so in terms of the cost, I think you start getting that portion. If you assume it is 750,000 or a million, is it, it 300,000 devices? Is it, is it 200,000? Is it, is it 100,000? We have seen that estimate from, from some GPS manufacturers. I don't know but it is not going to be the full universe, and we believe that cost is appropriately borne by the manufacturers. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.